So today I'm gonna to be going over my favorite bike maintenance hack. If your guys' wheels sound anything like this, then you're probably cringing every single time you ride and it is not a good feeling to be riding a bike that doesn't feel like it's in tip top shape, especially if it's making this type of a noise. Now, how is it making this type of a noise? Well, there's friction between the spokes. So when your spokes are really loose, the spokes will lean up against each other and that swaying of the wheel will create friction and make that noise. Sometimes it doesn't make any noise at all. So what you'll do is you'll be able to feel the swaying and the looseness of the wheel. You gotta keep it in tip top shape. And when you're riding a BMX or mountain bike, you'll be able to use this hack as well without a couple of the accessories I'm about to show you now. So the things you're gonna need will be a spoke wrench, which I'll link in the description below on Amazon, some zip ties, and a five gallon bucket. The five gallon bucket is gonna be utilized for a heavy electric bike like this, ranging between 60 and 80, and maybe even 100 pounds, depending on your electric bike weight. In order to get these things, if you don't already have them, you're gonna to have to pull out your wallet. So speaking of wallet, we gotta talk about today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Phantom Wallet. Phantom has wallets that can fit any budget, any style, have RFID protection, and come with a lifetime warranty on all models. Whether you want something simple, slim, and on a budget like the Phantom S, that can add accessories like a money clip, coin holder, or an air tag, or if you want to have something a bit more high-end like the Phantom X that is all aluminum and can add accessories like a coin holder, cash holder, ID holder, silicone band, and more. Or if you want to go full minimalistic like the Phantom C MagSafe wallet that can attach to your iPhone, all great options to keep you organized and minimalistic on a budget. Thanks again for Phantom Wallet for sponsoring today's video. So I know immediately when you guys heard that noise, you were thinking something of 80s, maybe early 90s-esque that kind of looks like this. I have this on my daughter's bike because, you know, I'm nostalgic and once I put them on her bike, she absolutely loved them. But this was not the noise, or these weren't the things making the noise on, uh, on that electric bike. So, how do we get rid of this? Well, I will show you right now. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is rotate the crank arms to where they are level with the left foot facing back. So we rotate it around, have it facing back. Now you want the drive side to be out of the way of the bucket. We're gonna bring our five gallon bucket in and put it in front of the spindle. And what we're gonna do now is lift the bike up and rest the bottom bracket area and this crank arm on top of the bucket, allowing you to be able to support the weight to gain access to truing the wheel. So now that that is all stable for truing the wheel, you should be able to rotate the wheel freely, make sure the power is off on the bike, and also note that you wanna make sure that the drive side of the sprocket is not resting on the bucket. You want it to be underneath the bottom bracket area to where there's no pressure on that sprocket. Now, before I get started, I usually like to try to look at the bike and see what type of repair I'm actually getting into. I'll rotate the wheel and I'll examine different areas of the bike to see what needs to be fixed. Now on mine, I only have a side to side sway and some of you guys might have an up and down hop or both. Now, if you have both, you will have to take the tire and wheel off of the bike, and I'll usually take the tire off and then put the wheel back on and do this entire hack without the tire on. But if you feel like you're unsure if the up and down hop is a tire or the rim, then always look really closely on the tire itself, and there's a line right there, and follow that line all the way around the wheel as you're rotating it, and if it's not even, all the way around the wheel, that means you have a tire seating issue, which can be fixed really easy. And what you do is you deflate the tire, and after deflating the tire, you'll pinch the tire to pop it off of its bead. Now it's really easy to get it back on because it's just deflated, and what I'll do is I'll usually inflate it about halfway, put pressure on it, rotating it, and it inflate it the rest of the way, and it should correct the issue. Now if the issue still persists, then take the tire off the rim, and then you're doing this hack without the tire, and it should be fixed by the end of the video. Now let's pop some zip ties on the side of this frame and get this sway fix from side to side. Now you usually wanna pick a zip tie that's a different color than what you're working on so you can distinguish the difference between the zip tie and the rim. It makes it a lot easier to see the play between the rim because of the bright nature of the zip tie. So we're gonna attach it to the seat stay part of the frame. And after attaching it to the seat stay part of the frame, you're gonna do it kind of snug, but not too tight. I mean, you wanna do it, I mean, this is too loose. You wanna do it tight enough that that it can sit there on its own, but then when you rotate it, it still stays tight enough that you can still move it because what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to cut a section of the zip tie off so that you can rotate the wheel. Otherwise, as you're rotating the wheel, it's just gonna do that and that's gonna be pretty annoying. So what I do is I like to try to rotate it in and then I see exactly where it lines up on the rim and I'll cut 
just back a hair from that. So after you've cut your zip tie, you should be able to move it up to the center part of the rim and rotate it around. You should have some type of play like this. Right now I've rested on the rim so you can see it's, it's pressured on it. I usually try to back it off just a little bit just to give it a little bit of distance there. And I'll do the same on the other side, just to have a good idea on where the center of the rim should be. Now, as we rotate it, it should, see that right there, it's rubbing there. So I already know that I'm gonna have to pull the rim over more to the left. We'll talk about how to do that once I put the other zip tie on. But as you see there, it's got a good sway from side to side. Let's put the other zip tie on right now and I'll show you guys how to true it. Now we should have a better understanding of what I was talking about. Look at the zip tie. See how it goes farther away from the rim now? And then further in. And this side should do the same. Farther in. Farther out. And now we have a truing stand hack without having to take the wheel off of the bike. Let me show you the proper way on how to true a wheel because there is a way that you can actually really mess this up and have a worse hop than you started with. So now you have your zip ties set up. You're able to see what type of rubbing you're getting on each side. And you, you can hear it, right? And it doesn't sound good. So what we're gonna do is you do a quarter turn per nipple. The nipples are these silver pieces attached to the black spokes. This spoke wrench specifically will work with damn near any bike, but these are 12 gauge. Uh, so we put it on the number 12 here. And I like to try to do about a quarter of a turn just in general, before I try to fix the side to side, I just do a quarter turn on all of them. Every single one of them, just to make sure we've got it proper all the way around and it's even. And I just keep doing that until I start feeling some type of resistance. Right now they're so loose, it's unreal. All right, so now that I'm feeling pretty good about the quarter turns all the way around on both sides and there is some resistance with the actual nipple and spoke, which is a good thing, now we work on the side to side movement to get this wheel as true as possible. And after you get it true to where it's not necessarily rubbing on either side of these zip ties, you wanna make sure that the spokes are as tight as I would say like you're tightening a bottle of soda. You don't wanna to go too overly tight because these threads are really, really thin and they will break. Now, even though you're sitting here and you're tightening these spokes, you're looking forward ahead here to the zip ties. So what you'll do is you'll see where it's rubbing and I'll rotate now and I'll be like, okay, it's, it's rubbing a bit right about here. And what I'll do is I'll take my finger and I'll rotate the wheel down and around or I'll spot a section of the tire and I'll rotate that section around to here and then I'll tighten it on here. That way you're not leaning forward and trying to reach and get your hands stuck between the chain or any of that stuff. It can be kind of annoying, but this is usually the best place for working. So let me just double check that right now. See a little bit of rubbing here. And I'll follow this little symbol on the tire all the way around to right here. And I will tighten the right side. Since I'm getting rubbing on the left, I'm gonna tighten the right side to pull it over and make it even. And when doing this, I'm mainly tightening basically a half turn or maybe even a full turn, depending on how much pressure is needed on it and I'll only tighten in and around two to four spokes in that area. Now these are just little pulls. I mean, these aren't gonna be major pulls. And if you have a major bend like that, you might want to possibly order a rim. And if you guys want to learn how to lace a electric bike wheel, feel free to let me know. I feel like that would be a fun little project video for me to do. So a great way to see if you're at the finish line when it comes to truing the wheel is if you have no resistance or friction from the zip tie and the rim on either side. Now you still wanna do a quarter turn or less on either side or until you're feeling some real resistance when trying to turn the nipple on the spoke, don't try to overturn it. Never over tighten because these are really, really small fine threads and they will pop. And then once that happens, you're in some real trouble. You gotta replace nipples and spokes and it's not fun. Let's finish this up and take it out on the road to see if I actually fixed the job.
So that's definitely one of my favorite hacks when it comes to bicycle repair, because I can do it on my BMX bike, my mountain bike, and even my electric bike, which I actually find the most value doing it on my electric bike. So with that being said, what's your favorite hack? Definitely drop a comment below and whatever one gets the most likes, I'll feature here up on the channel as another hack video. With that being said, if there's any other suggestions for future videos, put them in the comments below. If you guys like this video, drop a like. If you'd love to hit the subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next one.